And that has also been, again, achievement. We always, we think money and business and blah, 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 blah. But achievement is a, achievement in any aspect of your life. And one of the things that I'm most proud of is that, that work-life balance. And you do a I'm good perfect, job at that. But I think I do a great job at it. What's up, Mike? We're doing this. We're just drifting here. We're drifting. Uh, what's that? Dude, ring? what did you just do today? I just picked up a check. How did brother? that feel? Oh, it was good. What was that that you were recording me? The little mm -hmm. wink. Oh yeah, you want to see that? Yeah. Yeah, you get a little smirk every once in a while, dude. <laughs> what does that check mean, though? It is a good day because we just brought on two investors. And no, not, no ordinary investors. Yeah, not just the money. These are these are all stars. So Ryan Backer, he just had a big exit for My Hearing Center, 150 plus retail location. So he knows that world. Yep. And then Keaton Hoskins, he's, he's small a, dude, right? Small dude. Yep. Super small. <laughs> this dude was on the, the Diesel Brothers. He has millions of followers. He's well connected in that influencer, and then uh, realm. So we have the kind of the know-how of the building out brick and mortar stores. And then we have the influencer celebrity type. And then together they own a mastermind of 800 plus members that pay them monthly to take their business advice. Can you believe that? I, that so, blows my mind every time. <laughs> so talk about franchise sales and we, anyways, so we got some money from them, which is gonna help the company. And then, yeah, we just, I mean, more importantly, it's the partnership. Dude, how about the ride though? How, how did we even get to that spot? Or it was like, today's the day. <laughs> today's the day. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was just two weeks ago that we told that other, like literally two days ago, or two weeks and two days ago. It was that Saturday, right? And then we we're like, nope. nope, we don't want your money. And within two weeks, we found more money <laughs> or better money, I should say. The universe provided in a way. Oh, for sure. That, that, was, that was scary when we decided that, you know, we're like, okay. We, we know we need investment right now, but we don't feel like these are the right partners. Nope. And if we took it, it would only be out of desperation. Yep. And so what, what did that group do? They came back the next day, right? Yeah, they gave us a different offer. But yeah, we turned down a few million dollars. And when we have like very low in the bank account. <laughs> so anyways, dude, it got solved today, two weeks later. Feels good. Yeah. Everybody's got to go through that, right? That achievement. Oh, yeah. We <laughs> we picked it up. And we're like, okay, let's come record the podcast. Nope. Let's go to the bank first. Yep. That's the most important thing. Let's tell us in the bank that. it doesn't okay. count. Yeah, man. It's talking about achievement. When's the first time you failed? Oh, the first time I failed, man. Candy bars in elementary. We got kicked out. What? Yeah. Ele our elementary wouldn't let us sell candy bars. Were you, were you on, on, on premise. How'd you get caught? That's the first I don't, I don't, I don't remember. I wasn't, I wasn't discreet enough. And then we moved outside of the elementary school and just posted up like a little blanket and sold candy bars there. Were you profiting? Oh no, we were eating way too much candy. <laughs> I mean, I guess anything was profit, right? Cause I didn't, I didn't pay for the candy. <laughs> My parents <laughs> it's did. even better. So the, the best dealers that don't eat their product that you guys didn't learn that. No, no. So anyways, that was, a, that was a, my first failure. What was your first failure? Hmm. I was selling Chinese food in high school. I, I would get like 20 people to give me money and uh -huh. then I'd buy Chinese food and I'd mark it up 20%. But then I got caught and then I had to give all the money back to everybody or else I got suspended. Like what, what do you mean Chinese food? Like you're going to yeah, was, TF Chang's and it, you're just marking up their prices? Yeah. We weren't allowed to leave campus like for our high school during lunchtime. And so uh, I was the one ordering and coordinating. This is like 10, 15 years ago. So DoorDash didn't exist. Uh, so I get everybody's order. They pay me cash and, and I take you, I take the the split. So I'd probably make like 50 to 100 bucks every meal just by ordering. Dude, that was food. the coolest when you can when I got to leave high school and high school to go get food. Uh, absolutely amazing. We had a class that our teacher would give us his card. He was our financial ed teacher what? he's a homie mr field said and he'd be like go pick up some go pick me up a, a champ is what it was called it was a oh sandwich with bacon eggs ham um avocado anyways it was bomb and we'd go there and it was me and my girlfriend and he would give us the money to skip his class to go buy him and us sandwiches and he would pay that sounds like a legend no i actually still go to lunch with him here and there is he here in utah yeah yeah me and all my buddies 
like he'll take us all out. That is a homie. <laughs> the last time that um, we were scheduling it and it got rescheduled because his wife was sick and he always pays for everybody, even though we're freaking 30. The last time he's like, we were talking, coordinating the one, she's like, all right, this is, now you have money you can pay. <laughs> I'm like, all right, bro, I got you. <laughs> like, I see how it is. <laughs> I see how it is. Yeah. So anyways, dude, today's great. What a great day. And I freaking appreciate you coming on the last few months because mentally that's hard to like, oh, we're at the finish line with this investment group. You know, we're about to hit it. We're about to get it. And then it just keeps getting delayed, get delayed. The red flags come up and you're just like, but it's money. I need the money. So anyways, you'd have appreciated that. I've been able dude. to lean on you. I'd be like, dude, what, what do we do? Should we do it? Should we not do it? Well, and I appreciate that. It's been fun to join. What I value about you is building. Like at the end of the day, it's solving problems. Yeah. And moving things. And at the end of the day, it's hard to find people that appreciate that type of momentum and actually get it done. The, the breaking shit. That's what you were saying. Let's go just, let's go break some That's shit. That's literally like, how do we instill that in the team of like, if they're not screwing up, what are they doing? What did you fail today at? That was the, I looked that up by the way. So we were at Brandon and Chris Voss, some yep. premiere night at Sundance. They wrote a sweet book, Never Split the Difference, FBI Negotiators, Crisis Negotiators. And we met this girl there. She was super spunky. Oh, she was spitfire. She was awesome. She said that she was in, what was it with McDonald's? Oh, man. She was in some board meeting. But she said wonky. With That was a word I remember. Wonky, yeah. Anyways, Dirty Little got brought up in oh, McDonald's, was... McDonald's corporate as a potential competitor. And I'm like, that's sick. Like, we're already on the radar. Um, anyways, her... I don't even know where I was going with this, but her, her mom invented Viagra. Why would I? Why was I going to say that? We were talking about failure. Oh, failure. That, <laughs> oh, it's because her every mom. Every man can thank her because that was actually supposed to be a heart medicine. Yeah, that was a failure. Yep. Probably the best failure anybody could ask for. Yeah. And that's what they, both of her parents instilled in her is, Laurel, what'd you, what'd you fail at today? Which is so different. Well, I think to like to couple that, not only failure, but it's like, probably a term we've been using recently is like leaning into your authentic self. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm dealing with is like, how do you live on that edge where things don't make sense, but they do make sense where you're like the so intuition authentic. versus yep. the mind. Oh, I hate that. I hate like, intuition, dude. Like that That's is scary. That is the crux of like humankind of like, mm -hmm. how do we live in this divine state and how do we achieve more? How do we feel more? Yeah. And I mean, tracing back to failures, a lot of mine have been, I don't trust my intuition. Like in this freaking podcast room and it reminds me of an idiot that I hired. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm just joking, not an idiot. It was a bad hire, it's my fault. <laughs> but man, a few hundred thousand dollars later, that was a rough decision. Bro, like not literally painful. nothing to show for. Um, but man, no, it was, <laughs> it was a learning experience for sure. And talking about, shifting the mindset of like, man, what a terrible person I am for making that decision. When I knew it wasn't the right decision when I hired him, I knew it. Mm. Like the gut told me it wasn't, but I'm like, but look at his pedigree, you know, look at the other He's companies sexy. he ran and blah, 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 blah. And because I didn't trust that intuition, I mean, I consider that, that's my, that's my biggest business failure. I lost, the company lost $300,000 pretty much. Wait, what number was that? Three three hundred thousand dollars in a uh, matter of a few months. That's not an easy one. And yeah, we achieved a little bit that came after, like that he got the ball rolling. But I think I could have achieved that with fifty thousand, you know. So I think I lost a quarter million and that sucked. Did we learn any lessons from that? Intuition. Okay, so Jill, she's the freaking best business person in the world, our CEO at, at Dirty Dough. This is her fortieth year as a CEO of a franchise or brand. This is her third time that's doing great. it just crushes it. And you look at, I, I look at somebody like that and they're like, oh, they're so logical and this and that. And as soon as I told her like my experience with this guy and she goes, well, yeah, I always trust my gut. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, <laughs> what? What do you mean you trust your gut? She's like, I always will trust my gut. Interesting. Um, no hesitation. And I respect the hell out of Jill. And I'm like, okay, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Well, she's so non-emotional about things. It's just the best way. And, mm -hmm. and she trusts her gut. She's done that a couple of times on calls that I've been super impressed with. Yeah, she's awesome. She's She's been amazing to be around and just to see, 
I mean, she runs the company a bajillion times better than I would. How did you get so lucky? Oh, dude, another failure. Uh oh, <laughs> well, let's open this door. I hired the first, I mean, I was just desperate. Um, when I bought Dirty Dough, I was like, I need somebody with experience. And Josh still, he introduced me to somebody named Tracy. And I hired her based on the pedigree. I mean, I just, and I trust everybody because that's just, I'm like, you're trust, sure. trust him, dude. <laughs> she, the pedigree, you know, Mrs. Phil, Chipotle, Costa Vida, whatever. And I'm like, oh yeah, you come in. It ended up not being a good hire. After like six months, we got almost nothing done. Um, she's, she's a great person, but we didn't get anything done. But she introduced me to Jill. She goes, oh, I used to work for Maui Wowie. You mm -hmm. can... I, I know the CEO, or, you know, the, the uh, founder's name still and phone number. You want to, like, you can ask her to be an advisory board member. So, like, I look at that and I'm like, oh, that was a lot of, you know, what was her salary in those six months? You know, we probably paid 50-ish thousand. Um, and I got Jill out of that. Way, you know, that's yeah. that's where they, she did, literally did nothing, which obviously she did some stuff. Let's highlight um, that for a second. That is an abundant mindset. That is oh, looking yeah. on the flip side because a lot of CEOs would think that that's a wash and a waste of money. No, that was that was a good, good investment. Um, and that's how we got Jill. So, I mean, yeah, a failure and you just keep going and you find something good out of it. And and, and this something, it wasn't something good. It was something freaking incredible. She's a diamond in the rough. Yeah. The fact that she's still doing this, it blows my mind. I know. Restaurants are hard. I know. She's awesome. And I just am not good at doing that i mean i still to this day before going back and being the ceo again myself i would go knock doors and sell solar and pay somebody because i could make a few hundred thousand dollars and pay that to a ceo that's gonna do a better job than me and then i like doing what i like doing what what, what, what do you like doing dude like in in the business because you're supposed to be the tech guy but you don't know how to code so kind of <laughs> it's kind of bullshit <laughs> Um, I'm good at strategy and seeing the vision of the company, mm -hmm. like really understanding where it can go and encapsulating that into emotion and then helping people be able to actually move the needle. Um, that's where like my skill set really comes in because I can see the problems and I can intuitively understand what needs to be changed. Um, trusting your gut, uh, and then putting data behind it. That's like the biggest thing that I'm, I'm able to do and move the needle. Have you thought about becoming a coder? Yeah, but I turn dyslexic when I start looking at can't yeah. do it. I if, can, you, if you could, though, I don't know. I, I, you just don't have that much reach, right? You only have so many hours of the day look, to be at, a coder. At the end of the day, too, as this business, business owner focuses on your strengths, you can hire good coders. That's what I put them in yeah. a position. You can also have the best coder in the world. doesn't matter who they are. But if they don't have good leadership skills, then you're not going to go anywhere with the code. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. So you really have to find these people, develop them, turn them into rock stars, put a team around them where they can succeed and then help them with the vision. Because a lot of the time these people, you know, they're very talented with code, but they don't understand the bigger picture. And you have to keep teasing that carrot. You can't put too much in front of them all at once. He's got to keep teasing it. So your skill set and that leadership and the strategy and building the team, I feel like that's a similar skill set that I've had. I didn't go the tech route though. I've, I, I feel like I'm a little bit more, I relate more to the ops mind mm -hmm. and the sales side as well, um, but not the tech at all. What, what made you gravitate to tech? Because you could use those skill set in any of those areas. For me, it was challenge, uh, solving really hard problems at scale. Mm -hmm. Like I got rejected from every program at BYU except entrepreneurship. And as I got in, it was just like, how do you build things to scale? And it wasn't starting small businesses it was how do you build a billion dollar business? And it was, you can do that through technology or processes and systems. And mm -hmm. once you get into technology and you understand what data can be captured and what you can do at scale, it changes your mind and how you think businesses run. And at that point, there's so many things that you can do. It, it becomes unlimited possibilities. It's that leverage, <clears throat> that yep. leverage for achievement, whether it's personal time or business time, but it's, I mean, it's the same principle, right? Can I, lead a group of people to free up my time yeah rather than if i need this problem solved i need to hit the freaking keyboard and code code it out but i, I won't let me just direct it yeah and that has also been again achievement we always, we think money and business and blah 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 blah, blah. but achievement is a, achievement in any aspect of your life and one of the things that i'm most proud of is that that work life 
balance. And you do a good job at that. I think I do a great job at it. I think you do a phenomenal job, and especially like seeing you with your kids at the end of the day. Like, yeah, when you called me last night, yeah, you're doing a rave night. I I have a strobe light, and I got three kids. My my one year old is dancing on the table, just like moving his arms. Dude, (laughs) I'm like, Mike will call you back later. (laughs) <laughs> Which is what we need to instill in people because at the end of the day, if we're not taking care of ourselves, what are we doing? Yeah, that was a big mindset shift for me. And once I'd made that, I mean, 2022, by far the highest growth I've ever experienced. And 2022, by far, I've spent the most money on myself with masterminds. And I was like, I'm not paying 50 grand for mastermind. Like everything that these guys are going to teach me, I can learn on the internet. Right. That's the mentality. Yeah. And I joined that one and another one when I was like 20 and another one and then started investing in like my personal branding, branding and LinkedIn and paying for softwares on that and hiring a full time assistant. Well, I, I guess I had a full time assistant, but I have a full time assistant on Dirty Dough and then another full time assistant. And before it was like, oh, I don't want to pay her. You know, not that I don't want to pay her, but like it kind of hurt a little bit. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a lot of money. Um, and then I'm like, no, not at all. Like I'm investing in myself. Yep. Took the most time off. Spent two months in Mexico. It's crazy. Two months in Mexico last year. And we still got more stuff done. Terrible. <laughs> That's so long to be gone. But yeah, it was my best year. Invested the most of myself. I worked the least amount of hours. Still worked a lot. I still worked probably on, I mean, I'm sure I worked at more than the 40 hour average, right? Yeah. But compared to what I was doing with solar, I worked way less. That's a good feeling. When, here's, a, I'm going to ask another question. You talk about achievement means you had to shoot your shot. Mm-hmm. Talk about a couple of times you had to shoot your shot. No idea what was going to happen. Bro, I've never been in, what do you mean? This is dirty though, dude. I've never been in food. I bought a food business. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> so uh, the stars aligned on this. I was like, Tyler, he was the founder of Dirty Dome before I took his title. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like, dude, let's Thanks, franchise. Tyler. Let's franchise. I'm in San Diego. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I'm very confident that there's nothing out there that I can't learn. I mean, maybe coding I don't want to learn, uh, but I but I can if I wanted to. Like, you can learn anything you want to learn, and that's yep. always been my, te- my mentality. And I mean, that's probably the biggest key to my achievement. I could learn whatever I need to learn. I can learn to be the best father or whatever. So I don't know anything about this um, cookie stuff or food. And I'm like, dude, let's franchise because I'm just gonna follow your model. And, and I'll figure out what I don't know. And he's like, no, I don't want to franchise, blah, 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 I'm gonna sell it. And it was just one podcast that I just listened to, and it's wealth is built and buying real estate and businesses. And I'd never even never crossed my mind to buy a business. Maybe a franchise, but that's not a business. I mean, it is, but it's not. But to buy an actual business that I'm not leaning on anybody else for support, that was talk crazy. About restaurants too. And then out of all things, I bought a restaurant. What was your wife saying at the time? She trusts me. She's crazy. I love her. She doesn't even. She doesn't get involved at all. I mean, she does. Like in supporting me and everything, but like weighing out the pros and cons, she's just like, I mean, whatever you decide, I support you. And it's, oh my God, she's awesome. So I just listened to that podcast and I'm like, what I got to lose? 180,000. I mean, that's what I have to lose because that's what I bought it for. But yep. I don't know. I, I, I looked at it as, what if I went to Harvard? How much does that cost? It's probably 180 grand. I bet you'll learn more from this. That's a good way to put it. That was the same thing when I thought I was going to lose all my money in solar and invested like 200 grand in it. And we're always on the brink of right before we sold it, you know, like, is it going to go? Am I going to lose all my money? And I just thought, I learned more in the past 12 months than I would from four years at Harvard, you know? Can't put a price tag on it. Um, Because I got paired up with an amazing partner, my brother, and he's been running businesses for 15 or 20 years. He bought his first franchise at like 22. He's 40, yeah, so he's 41. Um, I'm like, oh, that's way better to partner with a family member that you trust, that you love, yeah. and that knows business and that's going to teach me how to do this. That was way worth it. Because now, I mean, look, I mean, we've made at least enterprise values, you know, tens of millions at Dirty Dome. Absolutely. And But I did have to risk that few hundred grand in solar and then risk the few hundred grand buying the business. But that's that big. Yeah. What about you? Where's your Where's your shot? I think, I think the pass or the stars aligned when I left Ovation. And had no idea. I walked away completely and was validating restaurants and Ovation. Yeah, Ovation. Restaurant tech. And you were one of the first employees or the first employee? I was a co-founder. So I was literally just an idea on a notepad. 
Oh, I didn't know that you, okay. Yeah, he so came I with you and that was just you and Zach. Yeah, so Zach had one other technical co-founder, no customers. He was like, hey, I have this review feedback software, not even feedback software. It was like a Google form on a sexy tablet. Uh -huh. That's what it was. And so we took it and we put it into different verticals. Restaurants had the most data, so we kind of ran with it. But um, during that process of scaling it, just realized like, the business itself didn't have what it needed given the, the dynamics. And so I walked away cold from equity and everything. And it was just like, Hey, this isn't the right time. This is what it needed. That's ballsy, I had dude. no idea what it was going to be next. And well, that's, that's so you, you're just like, no, don't feel it. Don't feel it, dude. <laughs> don't it, feel it. It's not swinging my way. I'm like, dude, you're crazy. When it happens, it happens. The stars align when it's needed. That's yeah. That's like, and but that's the scariest part. We were, I was talking with a, a coach that we both know. It's like, that's the most you feel alive is right in that moment where you're about Who to you talk about, about Melissa, Melissa, about being your authentic self. And it's like the scariest times you shoot your shot. Yeah. That's, that's when you're most alive. Or when, um, uh, we got crisp into swig, uh -huh. there's no reason we should have been in that amazing brand. And somebody took a shot on us and Josh Bouchard believed in us. He actually pulled us out. He said he agreed to put us in and then he called us back a week later and said, we're not putting you in. And we're like, what is going on here? We about cried, um, but we had to take our shot yeah. and it worked out. They're crushing it right now for, yeah. for Swig. And we just saw that video. Of that. Can you believe I those lines? Dude, this dude showed me this video of the Swig that opened in Oklahoma or something. And I'm like, why are you showing me the traffic? He's like, look, look how much traffic there is. It goes all the way down here and then it loops around the corner and then all the way down that line. I was like cool like rush hour traffic he goes no that's the line for swig and i was like no it's not that, <laughs> like what that's what you're showing me that was like 200 cars that that's an achievement right there that especially is especially in the restaurant space yeah i mean what a good brand that's gonna be dirty though it will be dirty though. there's yeah. no other way like we will have lines down the street for dirty though it's yeah, gonna happen sick. that's gonna be an achievement that's recorded on this podcast a big achievement opening up that vineyard store. That was our first real store we opened because the Tempe store, I mean, I bought, it wasn't my store. Um, and seeing the grand opening and we had like balloons, you know, I just never experienced any of that. Mm. And then the line and the Little Caesars kept coming out and getting mad at us because we were blocking the the drive through. But yep. the line went around the corner all the way back and through the street and then like clear down. And then just, walk, and then I recorded the video and I was like, oh, we have to speed this up to make it so people would actually watch it like by three or four X because there were so many people. I was like, that's cool that people are like, and we just created this. Like we just had an idea. I mean, we, we based off of what, you know, I'd purchased, but from what I purchased to what we opened, other than the name, nothing's the same. Nothing's right? the same. Branding, colors, logo, processes. I mean, we switched to centralized production. Um, every recipe was different. You know, it was completely different. You kind of pause there for a second, you know, like the idea, the idea of it. How do you yeah. manifest things? How do you, how do you create? Cause it, in order to achieve, we have to have goals or mm -hmm. what are we doing in a way we're just kind of stumbling, but what is, how do you set those goals? Oh, what's pushing you right now? I've always been a big goal setter of like, oh, I can achieve so much, but I hate people that tell me their goals and they don't do shit. You know what I mean? Yes. So I'm like, I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to tell I'm going to have my goals up here, but I'm going to be flexible with them, blah, 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 blah. When I took the leap of, I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to be on social media. That was scary. Cause I didn't want to share people. I didn't want to mm -hmm. tell somebody I wanted a billion dollar business. I don't know why, but like, I would have like, that was always the goal, but is I was it like, because it comes real or you have to be held accountable or is I it don't just, know. you don't uh, want to feel arrogant. Yeah. It's like, well, no, everybody wants a billion dollar business. What makes you different? We all want it. Yeah. But people, people won't say that or it's like, well, why do you need a billion dollars? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't need, need it, but there's dollars. a lot of good I can do. <laughs> um, and then that's that was the other thing that really allowed me to lean into it when I was more public about like the goal. We're doing a thousand stores and a thousand wellness centers, and we're going to sell for a billion dollars, and I'm going to help millions of kids. It's like, dude, you can hate. Then the funny thing is nobody even hates. I was so prepared for all the hate. I was like, oh, if I'm going to put, you know, people are going to tell me I'm an idiot if I post my goals and blah, blah. Nobody even hated people probably start buying in They're like, how do we help this guy succeed? Yeah. The more I shared the goal, the more people bought in. And it's like, I don't know how many, well, what are you going to do about tech? I'm like, I don't know. 
what are you going to do? And then you, you come and you solve it, you know? Do you remember when we were at Swig and I was telling you what we, what we can do? And you're like, what is this? Yeah, I was like, this is a different world. But it, it was getting getting out there. We need to get you out there, dude. It's happening right now. Right now. This is just getting started. It's It was crazy. I was, I was, I was really scared of getting on social media. I hated coming. I would post a few times a year and I didn't like coming up with the captions because what are people mm. going to... What are gonna? What are they gonna think if I if I have this caption versus this caption? Is this funny enough? Is this witty enough? Is this too real? I can't use the word beautiful because I'm a guy. You know, oh, we gotta paint your nails too. Then you can really <laughs> get away with it. Um, What's well, different? I mean, I, I used beautiful for the first time on social media after my first mushroom trip because <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? Who cares? <laughs> the <laughs> like, ego is now so dead. So silly that I couldn't. I didn't allow myself to use a word. Cause Wait, I so that was that. a real thing. That was a real thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the first night I said, I said, I told somebody that a beautiful family on social media. I love it. Just yeah. getting real with it. Why Which, hold back? Why would I not do that? That's so silly. Um, but using other tools in this case, it was psychedelics that completely broke that for me. And I'm like, Oh, let's, let's call the family beautiful. Cause that's a beautiful family. I think it's a beautiful family. Why am I holding back a compliment? Because and I mean, that was selfish, you know, to hold yep. back a compliment like that. Okay. You open up a whole nother world that we've been talking about is psychedelics and mental health. Dude, that's I mean, another we, show, we, brother. We can ramble on about this, but <laughs> when it talks about achievement, what happens when you get out of the way oh. and you kind of reinvent yourself, which we've been doing is kind of just being super vulnerable and staring, our, staring ourselves in the eye. Mm -hmm. I've had some terrible, like people do psychedelics recreational and i'm like how That's, this is does not terrible sound fun. every time i'm just it's terrible because i lose control of who i am and my mind and it's like okay well if i don't know who i am how am i going to defend my ego anyways yep. i just go into fear and and then like what is the fear coming from what's well, a lack of control i need control and then i learn to let go and it's just like well i don't need the control actually like it's cool to control things but it's also cool that they just happen dude because I, I can't control everything that came up in my, a tarot card recently it was like stop oh, controlling gosh. and my wife was like this is you <laughs> I, you need to stop i still have questions about tarot cards brother it's it's the uh, the uh the universe talking to you okay this is the first time i did a tarot card and i'm telling this lady this i was like i don't believe this she goes okay you don't have to believe it i'm like okay cool like, I like that response, but I was like, well, let me tell you why. Because <laughs> I want to get your opinion. So let me tell you why. Okay, tell me. My, okay. I drew a tarot card or card, whatever, and it said magic. Mm. And it said, um, you love magic. You believe in magic. You don't, you're not logical. You, you would, you, I forgot what I said, but something like you see a magic trick and you don't want to know how they do it because you would rather sit in the wonder and the awe. And I'm like. That's kind the complete like intuition. opposite of me. And she goes, well, that's why you chose it. And I was like, but if it was me, you would also say that. So this is just a win-win game. And I think that's manipulation. And then I look at religion. It's the same thing. It's like, well, the prophet said that, you know, or the guy, I don't want to get into that right now, but <laughs> it's, it's, let, let's just say in general, um, if you suffer, it's because God wants you to suffer. And if you're good, it's because you're righteous. Well, it's like, wait a second. That's so no matter terrible. what, no matter what you're right. And I am, and, and you know, I, I just feel like that's manipulation. Um, and I feel like that's what tarot cards are. Manipulation. I don't know. Same with the, uh, I was on a terrible psychedelic trip. Terrible. And, the, and, the, and the, the guy, cause I always do this guided. And you put yourself in this situation, right? You chose. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm paying, I'm paying good money to okay. be guided. To just, terrible just making time. sure. Cause you push yourself to the limit on that one, right? Yes. Okay. Six grams, brother. Um, anyways, Bless I'm in a, I'm in a terrible trip and she asked me when my birthday is. And I was just like, are you going to tell me my astro? What, I mean, what is that even called? Your sign? Yeah. Like Scorpio astrology. or astrology. I was like, no, we're not going there right now. Why are you even asking? And anyways, and, and, and my, my, same thing. I think it's a little man, manipulation. I think if I tell a hundred people, um, 
oh, your palm says that this line indicates that you've had a hard life. Everybody identifies with that. But you have overcame it. Oh, everybody does that. You have a lot to offer, but you're underseen. Oh, everybody identifies with that. Oh, you have a lot of potential. You need to put yourself out there more. Oh, everybody identifies with that. So I think they're generalized statements that everybody identifies with. And then when you read them, it feels true because it is true. But everyone is true at times of your life. That's my theory. Take it or leave it. Give me yours. I think the universe has a way of speaking to us at different times. Mm -hmm. I think some of it just has to be magic. Uh, what's the what's the fun in knowing how it all works sometimes? This is just like we check that box and we're on to the next one. Oh, so no. I'm changing. Those are my views, but I have also done energy work. And I don't believe in that, but I... he's getting into <laughs> it, man. There's no going I'm back after this. Out. Yeah. When talking about goals, what is what is one that scares you the most right now? And I'll challenge uh, go go ahead and answer the question. Um so the the billion dollar goal that that's it was just hard to say. And now I'm like, but why a billion dollars? Why not two? If it's, it's two, why not, why not four? Like, why can't, why not? Like, at, at yeah. this point, what I've been able to see myself accomplish and the team accomplish, I should say, like, wh why is a billion scary? So now it's like, do I want to vocalize a new goal? And is that happening here? Maybe. Yeah, I like four. I don't even want to do two. I want to go from one to four. Should hold bad. on to it all a little bit longer and go for four. Yeah, I like that idea. Why not? What about you? What's it? What's it? What's the goal? What's the big scary goal? Right now, this year, it's an Ironman. I'm scared shitless. You can do an Ironman? Yeah, I did two triathlons last year. This year, it's an Ironman. So and I'm what, scared. Twenty six miles running. Twenty six miles running, two mile swim, and a hundred and ten mile bike oh ride. My gosh, dude, it's insane. But it's a badge of honor. Yeah, that so is I gotta a do honor. You got to go to that Iron Cowboy guy lives in London. Yeah. My brother was a photographer. We, we could get him on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Let's get James him. Lawrence. I've met him a few times because he was like in our Vivint group. That dude knows about achievement. I don't think I could even yeah, he's, say he's it in my stories next to him. Um, James Lawrence, is that yeah. his name? Versus um, David Goggins. Gosh, which one do we pick to win? I mean, are, if you just say whoever runs the furthest, you have you have three days, no water, no sleep, no nothing. You run the furthest, who wins? I think James would win. I think so too. I think his athletic ability there. I, th I think James would change the rules and break a leg or something. But David Goggins also does that. And he'll... Yeah, that's true. He, will, he ran 100 miles and he was bleeding out of his penis the first time he ever did it because he didn't train i don't know they're both crazy well no you meet james because i've met him in person a few times and he's he doesn't seem like a crazy person i've met david goggins person he is a crazy person he's legit crazy <laughs> he, he is as in you read his audible book and you're like there's no way this dude's just always pissed and you meet him in person this lady facetimed her son i, I mean he just like it was a q a thing and he would just tear into people like not being a jerk, I'm not saying he's a jerk at all, but he is real and he's intense. And I'm like, that's really, can you always do that? That's crazy. I wonder what his morning routine looks like. Yeah, th that achievement. That's a good, did you read his book? Yeah. Can't touch, can't hurt me. Can't, yeah, can't hurt me. That was a good book. I love the cookie jar one. Do you remember that? No. Where, you know, when times are getting hard, you look at your past achievements, you put them in the back of your mind so you can kind of pull them up mm -hmm. and realize, You've made it through all these different hard times. Oh, yeah. But you just got to get through the next one. It's a cookie jar. Man, that's helped me a, a lot in the business. And then that's when I was talking about the control. I mean, mm. talking about achievement and letting go of the control. I need to control it today. Like, obviously, I need control over some things. And, you know, you don't just sit back and do nothing. But I want it today when it's supposed to be happening on Friday. And today's Monday. And I'm going to stress and even lose sleep this week because I need it to happen today. That's hard. Then going to the, well, how do I just like let it go and trust that's going to happen? Why well, go back to that, the cookie jar? I was mm -hmm. like, well, when has it not worked out? It's always worked out. Always. always worked it out. always works out. So how do you trust into that more? I feel less stress when I'm manufacturing it, but then it always causes more stress. When you're trying to be in control, always causes more stress. Oh, yeah. Way, way, 
way more stress. You're just like, I'm gonna sit back and do it. Anyways, man, achievement. That's freaking a scary word. Sometimes. How small we'll, can an achievement be? Um, I just listened to Andrew Huberman, my boy, Andrew Huberman or Huberman Lab podcast. Um, and to get going in the day, you want to set a goal that you can achieve in the first 10 to 30 minutes. So if your goal is I'm going to make coffee, that's a goal. And then if you vocalize that goal, not saying that you have to say it out loud, but like my goal is to make coffee this morning to get my day going. And then you do that, you do get a dopamine hit. Mm. and it gets your body going and it gets your motivation levels up. So like, what is it? I, I mean, you can use very, very small achievements of I'm going to respond to all of my emails. But if you, if you just start responding to your emails versus like my goal is to set, to respond to all my emails. Once you respond to all your emails, you will get a greater dopamine hit. So that's a very, very small achievement. Maybe, maybe it's three emails. Um, but that will give you motivation for the rest of the day. So he says you, you need two or three of those goals, you know, by noon that you achieve and you get those little dopamine hits. I can't tell you how many times I've set out for a big goal and I just fail because mm -hmm. I'm not doing the little ones. Yeah, You need the little ones to get that momentum. Yeah, it's like when people say, make your bed. Never ever made my bed my entire life, but I can, <laughs> <laughs> I can see why people say that, you know, get that little dopamine hit. Do you sleep in in the morning? Or does a, is a wife up before you? No, I, I'm up always. Oh, so that's why you can't make the bed. Yeah, but even if I was, I, might. <laughs> I don't know. Talking about efficiency, that is the most inefficient thing. I'm going to make my bed every day just to get back in it. We don't have to get into that. The, that ends a podcast right that here. That ends the podcast. <laughs> Thank you for listening, everyone.